Good morning, folks. Today we've got some small solar eruptions, more weather alerts, including a new enhanced alert for the Gulf of Mexico. We likely saw the beginnings of a seismic uptick that should continue here in the coming days, and we're also taking a look at a fantastic article on exoplanets from the European Southern Observatory. But, alas, there is but one place to begin, and that's spaceweathernews.com, where the last day on our star was calm, except for small pops, including one near the end of the sequence here. That is unlikely to be a major story when it gets to Earth, probably won't even make the Enlil spiral or be seen on Soho, but the small filament we're zooming in on here, in the Earth-facing position, broke at the apex of the filament arch, and most of that material went up and away. Like I said, it'll be small, though, just like the solar flaring can't even get a C-class event. And today, the sun can't even blame the lack of sunspots. Sure, the established groupings are simple loners, but that new group could develop fast today, luckily already turning away out of view. Solar wind at Earth is still well above average, but the steady state of that above average stream has failed to produce geomagnetic storms. Ergo, we have not seen a rapid intensification of that tropical system near the Gulf, but a slower one as the solar particles buffet our planet's magnetic field, expected to develop this week. And meanwhile, the next coronal hole is on the Earth-facing longitudes on the south. Trans-equatorial portion still has a bit of time before it hits that mark, but we saw an uptick at the 5 magnitude line yesterday, with one rumble nearing magnitude 6 in Argentina. We're overdue for more of that as well. Let's zoom in here on M67, a densely packed cluster of stars, and in this examination, the focus is hot Jupiters. It turns out that scientists are finding about five times as many of those massive near-stellar companions as expected in this cluster, suggesting that their close range likely plays a role in the activity and sphere formation of the region. This has some interesting implications for the cluster, and clusters like it, including some interesting perspectives if you've seen the Starwater series over at suspiciousobservers.org or you're familiar with the Drake Equation. One of those factors needs to go up in a big way. So while the tropics are on watch here, so is the Midwest. That low will drop most of its rain over south-central Canada and the Great Lakes, but a convergence tail could drop hail and even tornadoes south into the USA tonight as well. The Icelandic low in the North Atlantic has had enough and is breaking northeast to deliver major rainfall across the northern islands to the coasts of Scandinavia. Down under, the main story is that after a few more hours of that system pounding the east coast, we're going to have to put New Zealand on alert for it next. Powerful earth spot in the South Atlantic reaching back at southern Brazil with its precipitation. Hopefully some of that rain out ahead of it takes on the South African drought. They need it badly. Folks, because of my talk at the conference yesterday, our Fly on the Wall podcast was only 35 minutes. Power packed, though. And if you haven't seen Starwater, which I mentioned earlier, click Premium and then scroll down to Starwater. Remember, folks, next Observer's event is July 9th, and the third round of our own conference, Observing the Frontier, will open registration this week. Website members, keep your eyes open tomorrow. Registration opens for everyone on Tuesday. We've got shots of our star to close. It's 2.35 a.m. and 235 degrees here in Arizona. Okay, maybe it just feels that way. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.